Dragon Ball Super episode 36 review. The title of the episode is An Unexpectedly Tough Fight, Vegeta's Explosion of Rage. Now right off the bat, I actually do want to compliment Toei. I don't normally say good things about this company, but the animation in this episode was good. Uh, there was a couple scenes that were, pr I can, you can tell, were a bit conky, weren't the greatest. But besides for like one or two scenes, it was really good. Um, the art in this episode, as was the last one, was on point. Uh, a lot, not much happened in the episode. It was really just the Vegeta and Magetta fight. A very interesting fight. So, the main thing I do want to talk about is, uh, Vegeta takes out Magetta. He actually does it, what he does is he uses a final flash on him. And then he pushes him to the edge of the ring, and then he punches him and knocks him out of the ring. It's a very basic way of doing it, but it does work. However, I do want to talk about a couple of things. Number one, I don't really... I'm start, I'm curious to how the rules work in terms of a key blast. Maybe I'm misunderstanding something, someone will tell me. I mean, I'm, an, I'm probably an idiot, but... The key blast, right? Do a key blast not count as touching the outside of the ring? Yeah, I've always said, like, why don't- I was always saying, why not just destroy the ring? But, like, you know, Vegeta waited so long to do that. I don't know why he waited to destroy the barrier. I don't know why. Maybe he was- maybe he didn't know if it was against the rules or not, I'm not sure. That was really good. But there was this one part where Magetta actually got Vegeta out of the ring, and he lands on, like, a piece of the ring. Which I thought was great. It was really well done because I thought it got out of the ring. And you watched my live reaction, I was like, what the hell? I was shocked. However, this is when I start to get into problematic territory. The Vegeta landing on the thing was clever, but it is kind of stupid, in my opinion. But, you know, I'll let that slide. It was, it was still a good, small little plot twist, whatever you want to call it. However... This episode really, I feel, when it wasn't the greatest fight. It was definitely a creative fight, but the fight itself is there isn't much to it. Like it gets, it really is a battle of like lava versus uh, Vegeta's key attack. Which was cool. I mean, Vegeta did use the Gallic gun in this episode, which was really cool to see that again. Because like, when we the only other time I think we saw it was against Beerus in like episode what nine of Super. And let's all be honest, anything from that arc that was in the Goku and Biru fight probably looked like absolute crap. Because I don't remember too many good looking scenes. In fact, I remember especially hating the Vegeta scene. But that is beside the point. It was a good episode. What I really want to talk about here, mainly, is the fact that Magetta is an odd character. Because I really hope we have fan upon him, but there was this really cool... I get seen where what he did was, he spit, no he farted, he farted, and he actually ignited the fart with, uh, a lot with like fire, and it like blew up, like an explosion, that was pretty cool, I don't really understand how that works, I'm assuming it's just a trait of the, I'm just, I think it's just a trait of the grace, obviously, I still don't understand how a fart and fire make an explosion, but whatever, we learn also from Wheat that apparently the metal men, are uh, very weak minded but very powerful. So when Vegeta knocked him out of the ring, Vegeta had said, uh, you're nothing but a hunk of junk and that like like messed up the guy's head. Like he actually took that very offensively. <laughs> because I guess his mind, his mental state is so weak. I mean, as you can see, there isn't much to this episode. Like you asked me what happened in this episode, I was literally telling you Vegeta and Magetta fight, Vegeta beats Magetta. There, that's it. There's some comedy with uh, Beerus and Champa arguing over the whole barrier thing, but there isn't much to it. But what I do want to talk about is the preview to next week's episode. Now, I know I don't really talk about this, but Kaba is a super sign? What the hell? I will wait on my rant for next episode. I'll give it until the next episode for my little rant, but I am going to give my thoughts on if he is a super sign. Now, if he becomes the Super Saiyan for the first time during that episode, fine. <laughs> clap, clap, cheers, by all means, I'm fine. I'm 100% okay with that. That's great. That's actually really cool. But if he is already a Super Saiyan, 
I am going to be so pissed off you can't even be believe it. Because it will be the same thing they did with Frost. They'll say something in one episode, and it's not a plot line, it's not a plot twist, it's just them saying something, and then just taking it back. There is no plot twist, there's no foreshadowing, it just happens. Same thing with Frost. Frost, there was no evidence that he was a bad guy. And, until that episode. The four the part when Goku passed out and he was poisoned, everybody thought Frost was good, everybody loved him. So I swear to God, when Kabe, Kaba, Kabe, whatever you want to call him, when he said a couple episodes ago, I think it was in episode 34 or 30, it was, you know, it was in episode 35, it was the last episode, I think. No, no, it was episode 30, 33, I think, it was around there. It was the one when Goku fought against uh, Frost for the first time, it was around there. But he mentioned that the science and universe that do not have the ability to achieve the golden haired SSJ form meaning Super Saiyan, the regular one that Goku achieved on Namek. And honestly, ever since then, people have been speculating what if they have a different transformation and all this stuff. But in the preview, he just goes, you see him going Super Saiyan. So, unless it's the first time transforming, I have to call a load of bullcrap, because that, that means they're lying flat out to the audience. Because it isn't a plot twist, that's just a load of crap. That's all, that's all that is. But... In the end, it was a good episode. I have a bad feeling about next week's episode. It just doesn't look very good. I also want to bring something up here, just on a side note. I'll probably talk about this more in the podcast, but if, on Tuesday, but if, how do I say it? If Magetta, I mean, if Goku is back in the fight, technically Piccolo should also be back in. But let's say Piccolo is not back in. All they have left. Uh, I'm, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't all they have left now? Yeah, because there's five fighters: Frost is out and Vegeta is out. So all they have left is Kabe and Hisa. No, four. There's only the Botamo. There's Botamo. Yeah, there's him. But all so three fighters are down. There's only two left. But if you include Vegeta, uh, that means there are three fighters from Universe Ten. Two fighters from their universe. You see the problem here? Because, because what I think will probably happen is I'm assuming Vegeta gonna have to lose to Kaba. The reason I say Vegeta will lose to Kaba is mainly because Goku needs to fight one more time, and whether who's going to go last is debatable. I think I'm uh, almost 100 percent sure the finals of this tournament are going to be Monaka versus Tito. And maybe it will happen if Goku won't get a chance to go, and then if Monaka ends up, Monaka could end up losing, maybe, and then Goku will go. I'm not sure. I don't really know where it's going, honestly. All I know is that there are two fighters left in Universe Day. Kaba, the Universe Day Saiyan, and Hito, but, or Hito, the guy that took out Frost with that weird-ass technique last episode. So, yeah. And we still have... Goku, Monaka, and Vegeta for Universe 7. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of episode 36 of Dragon Ball Super. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. This is One Piece Nation, signing out. Have a great day.